The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the fifth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. The Gospel of the Lord. So each year on the first Sunday of November, we celebrate All Saints Sunday. But the word saint is one of those sort of fuzzy church words. Most of us are familiar with it. We use it at various times in our liturgy, and we read it sometimes in the Bible. But what does the word saint really mean? Often, saint is a title that is applied to people long ago and far away. We refer to people like Peter and Paul and Mary Magdalene as saints. And we refer to all the gospel writers as St. Matthew, St. Mark, St. Luke, St. John. But actually, I have never met any of those people, and neither have you. Moreover, with most of them, we know hardly anything about them. And then, of course, there are people throughout history who have been referred to, or often still are referred to, as saints, because they have done something particularly extraordinary or miraculous. The Catholic Church generally only canonizes saints, or calls them saints, if at least two miracles can be ascribed to them. Mostly, Lutherans don't use the title saint for a lot of those folks, but we have all heard of, and maybe we have known, a few people who have lived lives that we might say, oh boy, that person lived a really saintly life. But frankly, many of those people, they were sort of weird. And we often view them more with a series of sort of a sense of curiosity than as examples of faith. But sometimes we refer to all the saints and we talk about the whole company of believers in heaven and on earth. And this is actually biblically true. The word saint in the Bible means somebody who belongs to God. And they belong to God apart from anything that they've done. And this is a helpful and comforting thought, but it's also so general as to not usually be very helpful. After all, if everybody is included, even me, what is it that I am supposed to do to be one of those saints? What does that even mean? But here's a thought. It's been about 2,000 years since Jesus rose from the dead and sent his first disciples out to tell people the good news. And 2,000 years later, we're here. And that happened because people passed on the faith to others. And those people passed it on to more people who eventually passed the faith on to us. In the Catechism, Luther reminds us that it is finally the work of the Holy Spirit to call, gather, and enlighten the people of God. That is, the Holy Spirit is the one who brings forth faith, but almost always the work of the Spirit happens through people, people who somehow have been inspired to pass on the faith not only by their words, but by their actions and by their attitudes. Those folks didn't always do it well. In fact, sometimes they may not have intended to do it at all, but somehow, the Holy Spirit worked in their lives to show others that God was a real and living presence and that the story of Jesus was true and not just a story. Those people, the people whose lives passed on faith even when they weren't aware of it, are the saints. They're the people we remember because they showed us in some way that God was true and real in their lives. And so it's entirely appropriate that we remember many of those people in our worship service today and that we welcome Pearson as a new saint into our midst as well. After all, 
it's through baptism that we're called to be people who are open to the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives so that we can show others the reality of Jesus' presence. And often, showing the reality of Jesus' love and presence in our lives is done in small ways that are not very flashy. Sometimes, we don't even realize we're doing it. In fact, it's been the case in my life, and maybe in yours too, that some of the people who showed me who Jesus was were people who were not really trying to do it, at least at that moment. They were simply living in hope and trust, and I saw that. And while sometimes saints have done big things, often the work of passing on the faith to others happens simply through the simple words that we use. And while those words could be words of teaching our children about Jesus, sometimes those words are simply the words we use to talk about God. We use when we're in normal conversations with people and we say something that is not trying to convince others, but simply acknowledging that you believe in God and sharing at appropriate moments when you felt God's help and God's strength in your life. You know, probably some of the people who have been saints in your life have been people who simply told you that they believed even when they couldn't prove it or make anybody else believe it. That is what a saint is. And sometimes the work of passing on the faith to others happens simply through the attitudes you convey. You know, in the creeds, we talk about stuff like believing in the forgiveness of sins and the resurrection to eternal life. The saints are not necessarily the purveyors of great doctrine. In fact, I have known a bunch of saints who have been purveyors of pretty bad doctrine some of the time. But they are the people who so believe in the, forg in the forgiveness of sins that they share that forgiveness with others. They are the people who so trust that God has more in store for them that they're able to face whatever horrible crisis is going on in the world or in their personal lives in a different way than if they thought each crisis was the center of the universe. Probably some of the people who have been saints in your life have been people who conveyed that sense of hope and trust in God to you even when they weren't trying to do it. That is a saint. And sometimes passing on the faith is simply about making time for God in your life. You know, in our society, even more than money, time is a currency that shows what you value. When Rabbi Jacob was at Sherry Torah, he would always come and talk to our confirmation class when we studied what it meant to honor the Sabbath. And when he did that, he taught us a lot of things, and I learned a lot of things from that. And he said, you know, one of the most important things about Sabbath is simply that you take time and you make time for God in your life. That's why people get hung up on all the rules about what you can do, what you can't do, blah, blah, blah. But it's about setting aside time for God to nurture your relationship with God. You know, none of you need to be here this morning. Well, OK, there's a couple of you I need to run board and altar guild and stuff like that, play piano and things. But most of you don't need to be here this morning. But you came here anyway. You made time to worship to nurture your relationship with God. Unlike 30 years ago, there are lots of other activities happening on Sunday morning. Even more than simply a few decades ago, getting up and going to church may seem weird to a lot of people. And making time to read or pray or do something that somehow nurtures your connection to God, that seems unusual. Indeed, even taking time to say grace before a meal is not that common anymore. But probably some of the people who have been saints in your life have been the people who simply made time to nurture their relationship with God because it mattered to them. And you saw that. And that made a difference in your life. That's who the saints are. Saints are people who pass on their faith in Jesus. And so this morning, as we give thanks for the saints who did that for us, and as we welcome a new saint into our midst, consider also how you are called to continue living as a saint. And usually, that calling is not to be overly pious, but rather it's the call to consider how you speak about the reality of God in your life. 
It's the call to renew your hope and trust each day in a God who is bigger than the trauma of the moment. And it's a call to make time in your life to nurture your relationship with God in such a way that you also continue to grow in faith and hope.